Hickok 45 here. We're going to compare a new Marlin Model 94 with an older Marlin Model 94. You know, one of the big topics in the firearms world these days is when is Marlin going to get their act together and start making lever guns like they made them before? And uh, look on the internet, huge topic. And we've addressed it a little bit here and there. Uh, we've, uh, let's see, we looked at at least one new Marlin, the 95 Cowboy. Uh, we didn't have the older 95 on the table at the time, but so we've addressed it to some extent. Y'all keep requesting that we do more of it. So requested a brand new, spanking new Model 94. You can tell it's loaded in the magazine because we're going to shoot it, believe it or not. But it's a 357 Magnum, you know, 38 Special, uh, Marlin Model 94, freshly made, okay? And then I also have one on the table I purchased not all that long ago that's a JM model. It was made in 2001, I believe I figure from the serial number. Yeah, it's around 2001. So it's a JM model. And the only difference really uh, uh, in the models is, uh, I mean, there are maybe some differences we'll talk about, but the barrel's longer. That's a, I think, 24. This is a 20 inch. I don't, they don't make this, I think, in the 24 inch now. So I believe that's all, all they have, uh, at least right now. And other than that, uh, it's mainly just the barrel length in terms of the model, okay? And, of course, you've got checkering on, on that one. And the new ones, they don't put the checkering on, apparently. I don't know if that's available or not, but uh, in the just standard model, cowboy. And these are both the cowboy models, too. Now, also, on mine, I've taken the, the sight off, and i put the Skinner sights on it, which I always do with the Marlin cowboy models, okay? And uh, I was waiting for the helicopter to come by. I wanted to hear it while we are uh, you know, talking about Marlins. And you see this one has the old sights on it, or the new sights, whatever you want to call them. But it's got the sights that, that come on the Marlin Model 94. Okay, let's see if it's a, uh, if it's friend or foe. Uh, looks, looks safe. Uh, looks like maybe Vanderbilt Life Flight, I don't know. They go back and forth, so does Fort Campbell. Uh, always like when the Fort Campbell folks fly over in the helicopters. Usually it's a Chinook, Black Hawk or something. Just makes me feel safer. I know they're, they're hanging out. <laughs> Now, anyway, we're going to compare these Model 94s, and it's not a bash Marlin video, so if that's what you want, you know, you're not going to get that. It's not going to be an infomercial for the new Marlins either, but I uh, just wanted to take a look, and when we request a firearm from, from Buds, they just pull one off the rack, and, uh, and, and that's it, and so that's what we've got. My guess is, and you know, we'll talk about maybe fit and finish and some of the things about the new Marlin that don't quite match up to the old ones. We usually have to talk about that, don't we? My guess is if we got 10 Marlins like this or any of the models in, uh, whatever fit and finish issues they had or fit, uh, they'd be slightly different with each one probably. So uh, that, that's just the way that is. But So we'll talk about that and function and everything. So let's shoot the thing first. And uh, we're going to shoot Federal Ammo. We've got some good old 357 ammo. We've got some of my hand loads. Uh, I might throw a few 38 Specials through it. I have tested it with 38 Special. They seem to function fine. Uh, I've shot a lot uh, with everything. I've shot a lot of this, shot a lot of this, and 38 Special. And so far, it's doing, doing, doing okay. Okay, so let's shoot the thing a little bit. I think I've got the sights to where I can hit something with it. Had to, had to move them up some. It was shooting low. But that's why it's uh, adjustable, so you can get to where you want it, right? So, why don't we just wake up the gong with this new Marlin? First thing. Yeah. All right, it's gong worthy. See if it's red plate worthy. Got that one. I'm going to try the one on the right. All right, maybe in the middle. Okay, I'm gonna hit a buffalo. <laughs> and a ram. And a pig. Click, guess I won't. <laughs> so, in my shooting of it so far, uh, uh, after I moved that sight up, 
and I've been able to hit pretty well with it. And I'm not, uh, my eyes aren't the best for these these uh, kind of buckhorn sights, especially with a white dot on the front. It is a little blurry, but it's okay. Nothing like the Skinner sights. I love a ghost ring peep sight. But I can get by with it. I can get by. And uh, it, it seems to shoot fine. John has shot it a fair amount and uh, is able to hit well with it. It it seems to function fine. Now the first uh, while I had it, it was kind of hanging up and like right there. Now not just a normal extractor, you know how in your extractor you can feel the dragon on that of course. That's the, the piece back there. Uh, and uh, it was more than that. It was like I couldn't move and I had to bring back up and kind of hold my mouth right and jiggle it. But it was just uh, like the newness. So up oh, there, did it there. Okay. I hadn't been able to get to do that. Uh, Okay. so uh, so it's breaking in and and uh, you know it seems to cycle okay and that's of course I guess the most important thing the the metals that function okay the cycle the ammo any of that the trigger seems fine like I say other than that little break-in thing it seems fine now it seems tight and it seems to function okay and it seems to shoot all right now, I guess that's a big bottom line isn't it a big piece of the bottom line and uh, the fit and finish now is a little different perhaps. Let's look at it. You can see the, I say on the finish, it's a little more of a matte finish. It's not as nice as my 2001 model. Uh, it's not horrible though. I'll turn it over. You can see it's, uh, it's more of a, you know, like a, a satin, a matte finish. And uh, one interesting thing is they went back to this little barcode kind of thing, computer chip that they used to use back in the 1800s. They quit doing that for a long time, but now they've got that back on there, I guess, for inventory purposes or something. That's a little funky. They should have quit uh, doing it. They shouldn't have gone back to that. You know, I think they quit doing that back in, what, 1897 or something? And uh, so that unfinished. The barrel, I mean, it's okay. It's just not quite as shiny, not as glossy. It, it's still that nice octagonal barrel. I uh, kind of like that. Let's compare the fit and finish a little bit, though. We gotta gotta give them a little bit of a hard time on that. So the front of that forearm, okay. Look at on my right hand, it'll be to your right is my because the longer barrel. That's my older one. You can see how that looks. It's uh, not quite as tight and beveled up there on the front. Uh, you know, I'm not a woodworker myself, so maybe I I shouldn't throw stones since I might live in a glass house. I'm gonna turn them over. I right, look at the other side. Uh, yeah, it's just just different in it. Okay, not not quite the fit and the the finish of the woodwork. The metal's not too bad around there and everything. And I've seen worse. I've seen worse. This part of it uh, of the foreign right here where it fits, you can see what you got there. Kind of hangs out a little more there than it does on the other side. Let me spin it around. See, it's almost flush there. I think it'd be better if it was uh, whatever it is if it were the same all the way around. Right? We'd probably prefer that. And on this one, as you can see, you know, nice beveling there. And I believe it's pretty consistent all the way around. All right. So, and then on the stock, you can see the fit. Oops, still got that one cocked. Not that it matters. They're uh, both empty. Uh, you know, you can see the, the tang is kind of raised on, on the new one. I kind of flipped them on you. I got the, the new one on the, on the right here, on my right. And, uh, the fit of the tang and everything is a little better on, on mine, I believe. Uh, it's not horrible, you know, it's, it's not horrible. It's not kind of like, oh man, we'll put that back in the box and send it back or anything, you know. Uh, so there's no problems that make you just want to throw up or anything. Uh, I believe if I remember correctly, I should look at that video, the 1895 we did, the new one. I believe the fit on the woodwork was, was worse than this one. You know, Y'all might recall that. So anyway, you were still not getting that nice, nice woodwork fit and everything. The metal fit, I mean, as much as you can tell, I mean, it is a Marlin. They are kind of a, a, a working, you know, overuse that term, working man's gun kind of thing. The working woman's gun. They, I mean, they're, they're, they're not a 1886 Winchester, I guess I'm trying to say. They're, they're designed uh, to be not priced out of this world. You know, a good working solid uh, lever gun. That's really what they've always been, and so you know you don't expect them to be an heirloom necessarily. They're they're not five thousand dollars, 
But speaking of price, uh, this one I think you can get for about eight fifty. Okay. Uh, and pricing is, is something to think about there because you probably could find an old JM model uh, for around that same money. You know, it just depends, you know, if you looked around. And that's one of the advantages uh, of there being so many Marlins out there. And let me load it while I'm yakking at you. I'll put some, some other ammo in it. Is, uh, is that if, if you're just, I'll put some of my hand loads in there. They've got kind of a flat nose, even though they're rounded. They load easier, <laughs> I have to say. Uh, is that if you just can't stand the new ones, uh, there's a lot of the old ones around. And of course, they're more collectible and they'll continue to be more collectible and probably appreciate in value over the years. Uh, and there's a lot of them. But, you know, if that's not that important to you, then, you know, maybe uh, a new one is not that bad. Kind of depends. Now, 357, I noticed with this one, because I had never owned one, a 94 Marlin in 357 before. They are not as easy to load in general as your 45 and your 44. That there's something about hitting the uh, chamber, hitting the uh, magazine, getting it in there and lined up right. The uh, factory ammo is a little bit harder than than these hand loads. This rounded bullet helps some, but it's just got to kind of get it jiggled in there right. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Oh boy. And as the spring gets tighter, it gets tougher. Uh, and that was the first thing I noticed with th noticed with this one. Uh, I think it loads a little easier. For one thing, when you get eight or ten rounds in it, the spring is not compressed as much, and it continues to not you know, be a little bit easier as you get eight or ten rounds in it. And this one is getting fully compressed when you get up there seven, eight rounds, so it's a little more problematic. Just something to think about if you want a shorter barrel, because uh, it will hold ten, but that's max. That's max. All right. Well, we haven't shot any of this stuff. Look at this. Well, let's just take some of it out. <laughs> Holy shit, man. How about you, buddy? How about this target over here? Put a couple on it. You doggies. Right in the bullseye. Man, what a marksman. Let's smoke some pot with this thing. <laughs> All right, it'll still smoke pot that's the main thing click <laughs> so like i say it functions it uh you know cycles and it fires the trigger you know it's it's good stiff trigger i mean it's, you know you don't want a competition trigger i guess well you do if you're going to do cowboy action shooting maybe but i never think about a trigger on a lever gun needing to be a lot lighter that was pretty stiff uh like i say it works uh it functions and uh, this one, let me uh, load a couple in it. It's, uh, see, 357 just has to be lined up right. There's three. And as you get more in it, and I'm not going to shoot this one much, but I just wanted to remind myself again. It loads a little bit easier, partly because of the longer barrel, like I say. And, of course, this is not a fair comparison in some ways uh, shooting because it has the Skinner sights on it. And it has a longer barrel, longer sight radius, and all that. But I did just miss that uh, too late. <laughs> Could be because I didn't have my ears on. That's what it was. Right? I'm going to go over there and uh, hit that red plate. No, let's, let's get another... Uh, Ram. Woo! Didn't fall. Did that time. Pop a turkey while we're at it. Yeah. Gong it. Click. <laughs> so that's a good shooting rifle. Uh, uh, so some of the struggling with getting rounds in, in these two rifles is, I guess, the only two I've really had, is... Uh, again, it's just 357 is a little, little tougher to load. The first few just go in just, just fine, but you've got to line it up. And, and you got either going too deep or not. There we go. You, you can feel it as you're doing it. It's just different from when I load that 45 over there. I mean, I can grab rounds and boom, boom. I mean, it's just like clockwork, you know. And so that's the, the difference. The thinner round. So... I'm not even counting now, but let's say what else? Uh, 
we're not going to keep you all day. Just, I know that it's a, see, there we go, it's just tricky. Uh, it's a gun that seems to work. And oh, my thumb is beginning to hurt. Uh, it seems to work. It functions okay. Fine. Come on now. And I don't know. There we go. There we go. Okay. I don't know if it's a little bit beyond just the normal difficulty of loading 357. I don't want to underrate that or underestimate it. Uh, having a tighter spring because it's a shorter magazine, it is harder to load. But you see the first two or three just go right in easily. As with this one, the first four or five or six go in really easily. And then as the spring gets tighter, it's just more of a problem to load 357 than I'm, I'm used to uh, with any lever gun. Uh, but it functions. You know, fit and finish is not great. It's okay. You know, now on the wood, I wouldn't even rate it as okay, probably. You know, passable. Uh, but as far as the, the metal, the, the finish on the metal, it, it's okay. You know, it's uh, for what it is, it's, it's, it's okay. Oh, one thing I forgot to show you. We did notice this, the screws back there. Now this is a new gun. It's brand new off the shelf and you see what you got there. Uh, I don't know how those would rust like that. So you got the screws there. I, I would just be related to the bluing or lack of bluing, I guess. Maybe they they don't blue the, the screws. They, somebody's job is to spray some black paint on them or something. I don't know. You know, this one is older. It's a lot older. You don't see any rusted screws, you know, made in uh, 2001. And my guess is if I pulled that uh, uh, butt stock off of the other one, you wouldn't have any rust there either. And it's 20 years old, 21 years old, I guess. So, so you know, just some things like that. Uh, let me take a couple more shots here because we still have some targets that need to be engaged. <laughs> and Mr. Cowboy has not been hit yet. Right in the middle. <laughs> Boom! Nice. I'm gonna go over there and get that Mr. Piggy. Yeah. And that buffalo, uh, he won't fall. But I'm gonna hit him anyway. Oops. So, um, so there you have it. I have taken this one apart and I took the extractor out and the bolt out. I could do that. I, I don't know if you'd want to see that. It, there's, I didn't notice any difference between it and, and this one, really. I, uh, you know, you look for, I guess, like major tool marks and that kind of thing. You hear people talking about that, but I didn't really see anything in the bolt that like, wow, looks like they made that with a sledgehammer, you know, anything at all like that. Um, the action on this one, uh, yeah, seems fine. You have a little bit of a hitch, you know, I hit occasionally, but feels good. It just, uh, any of these Marlins, as they, as with use, like this one, because I use this one in cowboy action shooting for a lot of years, they just smooth up and they, they begin to feel like butter. Uh, this one is, I mean, man, that one with those Skinner sights, John and I complain about this rifle all the time, not being any fun to shoot because you can't miss with it. It's just, it's so sweet to shoot. Uh, well, they all are. So, uh, not to get off topic, uh, my assessment of these is that one is really nice. Uh, and this one is nice, very nice. And again, I think the negatives of, of this one, mine, is that it's a 357, it's just a little more awkward to load. Okay, 38, 357. And this one uh, is even a little more awkward to load because I think mostly the shorter barrel. Let me, I didn't shoot any 350 or uh, 38 special. I'll put a few of those in. Uh, and I have tried these outside the video and they work. Haven't had any malfunctions with it, you know, outside the video, or I'll let you know about that. And if we have a malfunction uh, inside the video, I'll let you know about that too. Okay. <laughs> there we go. So you got to get them lined up. 357. There we go. I guess. That's this one. You just look at them. The magazine tube is small. It's one of the most obvious features uh, that differentiates these from that 45 over there. I guess uh, I had never had one in 357. I was just kind of assuming they'd use the same magazine or something. But, but I guess you don't want that. They could get uh, kind of twisted in there. Uh, 
You don't want a magazine much bigger than the round, I guess. Makes sense. All right. But I'm still not sure why the 44 and the 45 are so much easier to, to load. Exactly what all the reasons are. Uh, you know, that guy never did go off there completely, did he? And now he's empty. Uh, well, let's shoot a 38 over there at the gong, see if we can tell any difference. <laughs> let's try the red plate on the right. Nice, try the middle one. Got him. All right. Cowboy, you need another hit. <laughs> and you got it. And you got it. So I think, you know, there's, I can see in the sunlight, you can see that tang raised a little bit there. It's not set down in there quite as deep. And John and I were talking about that for the video. If we got another one of these, you know, the tang might not be fit perfectly, but it might be down too deep or something just slightly. Uh, because you know this these are the parts that require some hand fitting i suppose and uh yeah that's 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 what you get all in all it's it's not bad uh shoots great and you know it's a nifty little rifle i like a longer barrel uh you know the fit on the wood maybe the biggest negative i guess if, if you really uh you know I, well I don't think you have to be picky to think that's bad fitting, right? Uh, but it works, and uh, depends on what you're going to do with it. If you're going to buy one of these and go deer hunting and knock around trees and tree stands and you're not worried as much about it, it you might not notice the fit, you know, at all. I don't know. But you're more likely to want just a plain Jane rifle, maybe polymer even, you know, if, if, it's, you, know, if you just want something for that purpose, I don't know. But that, that's kind of my take on it. And John and I, we, uh, we're not like really down on this particular gun. It's not that bad. Uh, it's just not that good either. Uh, and we'd still like to see Marlin continue improving and get their act together. Now, again, we, we, this is just one gun. And you know, we've done a couple of new Marlins. And uh, I guess the biggest negatives were the fit and finish. Uh, you know, it could be, and in, in, uh, share your experience uh, preferably if you don't work for Marlin or Remington or somebody, <laughs> but uh, uh, have an objective you know, viewpoint. Uh, but what, what you actually have experienced with one, if you bought a new one, how it's doing, and how the fit and finish is on yours, you know, I mean, that's really, I guess, who would like to hear from. Because uh, we definitely are going to hear, and we have heard, right, all of us a lot from the uh, folks who have uh, complained about these and have bought one and, and you know, it didn't work whether it's a Remington shotgun or it's it's one of these or whatever uh, We always hear about the negative, right? That's those are the that's the squeaky wheel, you know uh, So we're, we're gonna hear a lot of that even if there's only ten of them that uh, don't work on the planet We're gonna hear a lot about that, right? So so anyway, if you have one uh, uh, That you know whatever your experience is with share it okay because a lot of people want to know that's why we get requests to, to compare them and to get more of them in here and we'll do it every now and then maybe we'll make it like an annual thing at least once a year we'll order a new remington maybe this gun and then compare it with the jm model i don't know uh because i like marlins and uh we want to keep track on them of them and uh and you know we all want to keep the pressure on them to to continue making these fine lever guns and uh, and, and everything else they make and, and, and doing a good job of it, you know? Uh, fix the things that are wrong and uh, that, that need improvement and just keep making them because they're really nice guns. They're, they're solid and uh, they have a reputation all through the years of being good solid lever guns. Uh, so, and, and again, they're not heirlooms. They're not, you know, $10,000 uh, firearms. We just want the fit and finish to be nice, uh, be close, like it used to be, and uh, for them to work well. Yeah, not asking too much, is it? So, so anyway, bottom line, it, it's not horrible at all. It's just uh, you saw what it is. It works fine. We've been shooting it. I've, we put a lot of rounds through it, and uh, we can shoot it as, as well as that one. If we didn't have the Skinner sight on that one, 
Uh, I think we'd be shooting them both uh, the same. The Skinner sight helps, at least with me, not so much with John maybe, but I have a harder time you know, focusing with, with that sight. But uh, not, not bad, not bad at all. So anyway, I don't know what to tell you if you're thinking about ordering one. You know, it's, it's kind of a luck of the draw and maybe it comes down to how picky you are, particular you are, about the fit and finish on it, okay? I'd say ideally, uh, this would be a good thing to, to, to look it over in a shop, you know, because you order one online, you never know what you get. Uh, but if everyone you look at in your local shop looks like this and it's irregular in various ways, like all the ones I've seen, that's pretty much the same thing you're gonna get, you know, uh, if it's sight unseen, I guess. All right, anyway, I don't like blabbing on and on. I, I keep thinking there's something else we should tell you about it. But you, know, you saw, I think you saw, have seen the imperfections here in close up. Uh, so you know what you think about that. And then uh, the, the function of it you saw too, and it has function, you know, well. So anyway, a new Marlin model 1894, 357 mag, 38 special, fires both, as you saw, and seems to work. So that's about all I can tell you. Life is good. Oh, I didn't see that. I was just playing my favorite country and western song. Uh, while I've got you here, I want to remind you to check out our friends over at SDI, the Sonoran Desert Institute. You can find them at sdi.edu. They are a fully accredited online distance learning program where you can become uh, get an associate's degree in firearms technology or become certified in uh, gunsmithing. So if you're interested in a career like that, please go check them out, sdi.edu. Also, while you're on the internet, please go to hickok45.com and see everything we have over there. Um, we have all of our social media links, and all that kind of thing, like, like uh, full30.com, um, links to our store. We have t-shirts now that you can, you can acquire for yourself with your bunker branding. Uh, Matt from Demolition Ranch's new company. Um, it's hickok45 on Twitter, just to save you the time from going to the website. Um, Hickok45 on Facebook, uh, the real Hickok45 on Instagram. Um, there's a John Hickok YouTube channel. There's a John underscore Hickok45 Instagram where I post some stuff. So please go check that out. And then I'm going to get it back to uh, playing this country song. <laughs> Thank you.